Yes, the day has finally come. The Tensor Mag Light Hollow. Lightest truck ever. I mean, you know what? These are so light that I think they're gonna fall out of the parameters of like what a skateboard should feel like. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is like, if a deck gets too soft, it doesn't feel like a real skateboard. If it gets too hard, it doesn't feel like a real skateboard. If a wheel's too soft, it doesn't feel right. If it's too hard, it doesn't feel right. If a board's too heavy, it feels wrong. If a board's too light, it feels wrong. And I think these at 260 grams, this is an eight inch truck, I think 55 millimeters tall. At 260 grams, it is the lightest truck in the world and I think it's gonna be too light. I think an ideal truck weight is somewhere around like 380 to 330 and anything under that gets too light, anything over that feels pretty heavy, but can be balanced out by having steeper or mellower kicks bigger or smaller wheels, you know, a bunch of things like that. Yeah, anyways, after all that, um, it is time to actually set these up. And what am I gonna ride this on? So I've been putting this off forever because I just didn't actually want to try a truck this light. When I first got the box in the mail, I grabbed the box and I laughed because I lifted up the box and it felt like there was air in it. These are like laughably light when you first pick them up. You almost think they're plastic. But anyways, on this board right here, it's a nice steep kick 8.25 that's just a little bit narrower than 8.25, so I think it's the 8-inch truck will still work. But I've got Indy standards on here, you know, and we'll, uh, we'll set these up and see what the weight of them is, but a couple of things I want to do. So first, let's check the wheelbase on Indy standards on a 14 and a quarter wheelbase. And then we'll set up the, whatever, the, the tensors, and we'll see what the wheelbase is on those to see if maybe they compensated by widening the wheelbase out to compensate for such an absurdly light truck. Anyways, I'm gonna get this apart and get those set up. Check this out. They got little nubs so that when you put your board on and screw it down, it doesn't wiggle around as much. That's kind of cool. But yeah, missing a lot of material here. It kind of has a circuit board kind of look. Pretty tech. All right, so I just got these set up, and yeah, this is like almost laughably light. Um, the wheelbase is the same as Indy's, basically. I think actually my wheelbase on Indy's is 17 and 3 8 and the wheelbase on these was actually 17 and 5 16 So we're even going down by 1 16 which won't have a huge effect. But, okay, the weight difference. So these were what? just over 260, my Indies are 377. So we are going down 117 grams per truck. That is gonna be an absurd difference. Like there is absolutely no way to not notice such a dramatic change. There's no way that you're gonna be able to chalk that up to a discrepancy of like 10 or 15 grams per truck. Oh, it feels different, I think. This is like night and day. There's a few other things I want to quickly read here. So what it says is, these are the all-terrain geometry. They have reactive turning, quicker response. I don't know exactly what response means. Stronger and lighter. I have heard a lot of stories about tensors. The weak point is that they're weak. So we'll see if I can break these or not. And lower kingpin. So how about that? Yeah, that's low. That's lower than Indies. It's it's about on par with a Venture Low, in or not Venture Low, a Venture High. So that's good kingpin clearance. Really interested to see how these feel. They look like a tall truck. They're actually a pretty good looking truck. I'm not crazy about this color scheme, but I believe these trucks have to be painted because the magnesium oxidizes or corrodes really badly when exposed to air. So they do have to have a finish on them. Anyways, it is time to go pick Austin up and get out for a session. Oh, pick up that board. Does it feel light? It's gotta be the lightest board I've ever felt. <laughs> Try a few tricks. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Maybe too light. That tray flip felt pretty good though. Oh. 
You know, they're light, but this deck I'm riding is kind of thick and heavy, and these wheels are balancing it out. It actually doesn't feel too heavy, right? Or I mean, too light. I don't know. I'm gonna actually warm up and get used to this thing, and we'll film some more. Okay, first impressions. Once I got used to it, yeah, they really do feel light. And one of the things that does is it reduces the amount of feedback you feel on your flicking foot. So I'm much more prone to getting rocket flips. I'm not able to flick my frontside flips properly. My 360 flips, however, actually feel kind of amazing. The grinds on these feel quite fast. Like I mean it, like really fast. Like most of that curb isn't even waxed properly and I was able to plow through it. And the turning leaves a little bit to be desired, at least at first. So when they're brand new, they were pretty squishy and turny, and then they tightened up a lot, and I've got them almost as loose as they can possibly go. I'm getting wheel bite quite easily, which is surprising for a 53.5 millimeter truck with only 52 millimeter wheels. Like, I shouldn't be getting wheel bite like that. And I can't really tell if it's like sharp turning or if there's a lot of lean. Um, I do know that when I'm trying to get my full turn, that's when I get wheel bite pretty easy. So that's my first impressions. Okay, so that first session, it was interesting. Um, definitely found out the trucks grind really well and that they feel very light. But that control deck was heavy and the wheels, they're heavy too. So it was totally not the kind of setup that a person that's going to buy those trucks is going to ride. So next, I decided to set them up on a 8.125 generator blank with some skinny bones v3s so that's way more like what somebody's gonna ride and you know what i found that shockingly light so before we get into what my perceived downsides of that are let's get into one of the upsides so manuals actually manuals work really nice when you have such a light truck when you're balancing the truck, so like this one up here weighs so little that it just gives you all this adjusting room. It's crazy. Like these are, I can say without a doubt that these are the best trucks I've ever ridden for manuals. I should be more clear. I mean, they're the best trucks I've ever ridden for holding a manual. Popping your trick getting into manual or popping a trick out of manual is another story. In fact, you're actually going to want to have a little bit more heft. Let me demonstrate that here. Just for fun, should we try it on my big heavy board? Well, I don't know what to say. Second try and it was way cleaner. Let's try nose manual nollie flip.
Right, not bad. I almost over flipped it. Now let's try 8.25 with Indy 144. I definitely feel like how well I could hold the manual on the tensors was helping me set up for the trick. But this deck is a lot steeper and I've got more room to flick if I eventually get comfortable enough to do it. So while I could definitely hold my manual better on this, and that did have some advantages in that I'm not kind of worn out from holding the manual so I have a little bit more energy and control to do the actual pop. By the time it came to do the pop, I had this super light feeling little board that I couldn't feel on my feet properly. And when you only have half of your pop left, you actually want there to be a little bit of heft which was why I found actually my good old fashioned hefty indies to be better. Okay, thanks. Well, I just had a quick interruption to do a four year old's pigtail, so I've lost my train of thought. I think it was something about popping out of manuals. Yes, the pop out of manuals was easier for me on indies because I could feel where the board is. So let's get into that. What do I mean by feel where the board is? So what I mean is when your board is so light and you snap to do your trick, it's like your board doesn't stick to your feet and you don't get that same feedback on your flicking foot. Like you flick and you just can't feel the board properly. And then it's so light that it just kind of wants to fly all over the place. So even though these trucks are light, I actually find myself often getting less pop because it feels so much less responsive to me. Leave the cat alone. Oh, I'm trying to catch her to pet her. I'm just trying to catch her to pet her. Okay. What was I going to say next? I can't even remember. Filming at home. Okay, one of the next things I tried to do is I thought, well maybe doing like a slide flip trick out would be easy with such a light truck because it's one of those times where again, you don't have a lot of room to pop and having a board that's like light and nimble should make that easier. First try and clean on the heavy wider board. Whoa! So once again, I found it easier on my big heavy indies. Now I know, I know, I can hear the Tensor fans groaning and the indie fans doing their like chanting all their indie slogans because they're not thinking for themselves. And I want to be really clear here. One of the reasons that this is happening is because I have a preference for a heavier board. It's what I'm used to. And so whenever I'm trying to do something, I'm naturally always going to do it better on those boards. So let's be really clear about that. Okay, so it hasn't seemed like I've been talking very favorably about these trucks at all. Now, what can I say good about them? Okay, here's one. And it actually was noticeable and substantial. These have the smoothest, best grind I have ever felt, hands down, over any other truck. For anybody who's ridden Indies and then they go to Ace and they're like, wow, those are a lot smoother, pretty buttery. These are like, like nothing else. In fact, if you aren't expecting it, they can be way too fast if you're jumping onto something really slick. So there's actually going to be a transition period where you're having to get used to how fast these are. And if you got used to these, the speed of these grinds, it actually makes everything else feel really bad. So I want to say that these are gonna be really good for slappies because they're so smooth, it's a light, easy board to ride. I really want to say that, but there's two things 
that are going to be detractors there. One is the turning's not that great. If you sort out the bushing thing, again, leave it in the comments if you guys can figure out the bushings. Uh, I'm not going to spend the time to figure out the bushings. If the bushings don't work on a truck, like straight out of the box, then I'm usually not going to ride them. That's just my policy. I don't go down the bushing changing vortex. But the other thing, and I'm not totally sure, but I'm pretty sure that I bent the axle a little bit on the wheel that slams up against the curb on slappy. So from doing slappy crooks and slappy grinds, I'm I couldn't tell and there was no way for me to measure it, but when I looked at the wheel, it looked off. And remember, I have a carpenter's eye, so maybe, maybe not. Let me know in the comments if that's happened to you, but I would say that there is a risk of that. Can neither totally confirm nor deny whether I bent these axles. It wasn't obvious enough to be like, dang, that's a bent axle, but it wasn't straight enough to be like, that's a proper axle. All right, the final verdict. I know there's gonna be some people that are kind of bummed that I didn't spend a lot of time on these and get used to them. And the reason for that is if I actually get used to these trucks, I'm not gonna to wanna to ride everything else. They're so different in the pot feel and the grind that I really think that you either have to commit to tensors or just not ride them. That's my personal feeling on it. And because there's so many things about them that aren't suited to my personal preferences, I wasn't willing to invest the time to actually get used to these trucks. However, if you have, again, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Can you ride other trucks now? Have these become your holy grail of trucks? But anyways, I'm basically done talking now. Um, I think, let's see, what are these gonna be really good for? I, I don't think they're going to be good for somebody who's hucking downstairs. I think you're going to break them for sure and the board's going to feel too light. You're not going to know where it is when you're catching it. That seems like it's going to be a drawback to me. I think these are going to be really good for somebody with some tired legs or somebody who loves manuals and who likes a really light, absurdly light, ridiculously light pop. I think riding these with a steeper deck is probably going to help. Um, again, I don't like really steep decks. My preference is towards riding decks that are a little bit mellower and riding them with standard trucks. So that's always going to be my first choice is finding something a bit mellower that works really well with a slightly heavier truck. Anyways, um, that's it. So leave it in the comments. Tensors, yay or nay, love them or hate them. Let me know all about it. Thanks for watching and Hopefully you guys are having an awesome time riding whatever trucks you ride. Get them out there and shrap them. I, um, I did a pretty good number on these. This wear and tear is just like three days, but I was breaking in curbs. So um, these are the perfect truck for breaking in a curb because they grind before the curb actually grinds properly on other trucks. I think I took about, oh, what was the, the front truck was 362 and the back truck is 358. My back trucks always weigh less than my front truck. I take more meat off of those ones. Anyways, I'm done. I'm officially done. Thanks for watching. Till the next video. Go do your thing.